Martin Place at uh, Vivid Sydney 2015. It's a festival of light and art and all that sort of stuff. Let's go check it out. And I'm here with Phil, and he's got his Intel card. Yeah, yep. we've got special VIP special access. Treatment. Yep, VIP access to Intel. All right, let's check it out. This is some sort of uh, interactive wooden art thing and it says you can touch the copper edge so you can actually see the uh, you see the conductive edge so I'm, I'm making that sound uh, go now so that's pretty neat I don't know who the um, artist is for that but uh, yeah I rather like it and there's a few of them here beautiful and this Vivid Festival is actually all over the uh, city. It, in fact, you probably couldn't see it in one night. There's so many different art installations and things like that. So we just come to Martin Place. Intel have got some uh, drone. Wow. They're going to fly okay. some uh, drones. They call it Game of Drones. Yeah, go figure. Anyway, we've got passes to that. Apparently, not sure what time it starts. Hopefully, we haven't missed it. We'll get some footage. But yeah, there's tons of stuff. There's dozens and dozens of art and light installations all over the city. Brilliant. You'd expect to only get this sort of stuff in Melbourne, but no, someone was thinking. I've got no idea what they're doing in there, but uh, yeah, you have to stand here for a while and see. They've installed a whole bunch of screens, and uh, there you go. It's called Phase Frames, and there's the artist. Good on you. Collaborators, and uh, it's inspired by the technology of 1920s celluloid filmmaking and the workings of Zotrope. Ooh, there you go. Early animation for those uh, animation nuts. So there you go, right, it is um, early animation stuff. Neat. Ooh, Phil's getting some photography. Watch out. And they've actually uh, turned Martin Place into a whole bunch of uh, food stalls and everything else. This is normally just a big open uh, uh, thoroughfare, but uh, yep, completely changed. And they've got all graphics and everything. Fantastic. And I'm here with Mike Downey, and he's from Intel, and he's going to tell us all about this drone. Hi guys, Mike Downey from Intel. So this installation is called a Game of Drones. Um, it's live at Sydney Vivid right now in Martin Place. Now the idea behind this uh, installation is to bring relevance, so people understand who Intel are and what we're doing. Now this installation is very sophisticated. It's not just a case of throwing drones inside a cage. It's a case of these drones are actually being powered by Intel processors, and we do that in two ways. Which Intel processor? So we, we've, we've got one that's an Intel um, Atom processor, and yep. another one that's an Intel Core i7 processor. Oh, okay. I'll explain to you a bit more about how that works. On the left-hand side there, where you see members of public over yep. there, they are using a Microsoft Surface Pro with an Atom processor inside. Right. Now, that tablet, when they move it to the left and to the right, governs the flight path. So that's an Intel powered tablet, as you can see it's moving around here. Yep. Now what's very sophisticated about this installation is when there's a number of drones in here, we have a very high powered Intel Core i7 system tucked away in that command center. Now what's happening in there is that system is constantly monitoring the location of each individual drone. So oh, each, a, camera. a number of different systems. Yep. So they have infrared yep. camera systems. They also have GPS systems on, on top of them as well. So they are, at their basic format, they're Parrot drones. Now you can buy a Parrot yep. drone for three, four hundred dollars. However, these are bespoke. After we finish making these modifications, they're about five thousand dollars each. Wow. So these drones, as you can see right now, with four of them running, mm. they are constantly looking out for each other, working yep. with Intel Core i7 system. So you'll notice that none of these drones are hitting each other, and that's purely because the Intel Core i7 system is constantly mapping and, and monitoring their location. So should a member of, of the public try to drive them into each other, yep. they simply can't do that. The whole installation is being monitored by an Intel Core i7, and the okay. flight path is being controlled by Atom processors. Got it, so the public are controlling them, but the Intel processor can step in and- Take over if and it needs take to, over yeah. if they're gonna to crash together. But it's constantly watching their location. Got it. And that's, is that any part of the real sense technology being used there or? It's a good question. So it's funny you should say that. We do have some drones that are constructed with real sense on top of them. Mm -hmm. 
good news around that is, is if we integrate real sense on top of drones, when a drone flies through, let's say, a wooded forest, because real sense understands depth, it can monitor the size and the shape of trees. And without the without human intervention, a drone can fly through trees if it wanted to, because it, it sees the world in 3D. And that's all thanks to Intel Real Sense technology. Before Real Sense came along, you weren't able to do that. Right. So Real Sense is basically a stereoscopic camera. Correct, with an with, infrared camera. Yeah, with infrared as Correct. well. So understands right. heat and also works really well at the night as well. Yep. So in terms of a webcam, it's a really good nighttime camera as well. Here at the Game of Drones, uh, Intel RealSense system with the guys who developed it. This is Clint from Robotic Systems. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Clint. No, He's going to tell us all about it. Tell yeah. us so, um, how this thing works. Okay, so basically we um, we had to develop our own uh, localization system uh, for this specific uh, application because we don't get very good GPS uh, in Martin Place. Yeah. Um, so we've developed uh, something using uh, time of flight of radio. Um, so we've got our boxes out in the out in the. Um, you can see the box. Is on the side, right down, yeah, yep. on, on the frames. On top of the drones. Yep. And basically, the way, the way our system works is it's like attaching a piece of string to each box. Right. And then the drone can go anywhere, and as long as it knows how long those pieces of string are, yep. um, we can then tell in 3D space where it is. What sort of LiDAR system are you using? What are the tech and what frequencies? What? Uh, so we're using just a, we're using a, a pulse light lidar uh, lidar light. Um, basically, it's just shooting a, um, a laser encoded signal at the ground and waiting to see what comes back. And the propagation delay will give us a height. But we can nice. have multiple yep. in the arena um, without them interfering with each other. Fantastic. Um, and we can see them up in the air at the moment, and they pretty much can't collide, or well, that's the plan anyway. Um, what sort of uh, range would this system work out? What, what sort of, uh, um, so the, how big the radio, the radio um, system work out yep. to about 300 metres. Right. Um, the LiDARs are good from 20 centimetres to 40 metres. Okay. Yeah. Um, Basically, these systems, once they get above 40 meters, we'll switch to using barometer so, yeah, um, and or GPS for uh, um, We can we actually feed, yeah, well, we, we actually get X, Y, and Z coordinates back um, with this system. Um, we find the accuracy on this one which is a lighter, so we decide to use that instead. Got it. And these are just standard uh, drones that you yeah. bought off the shelf and you've modified them to? Yeah, yeah, so these yep. are just um, a standard uh, luminary Nanos frame, yep. uh, running 2200 kV motors with 5 by 3 inch props. Um, so they're little little power packs built for racing. Um, yep. they, they they burn through the battery pretty quick. Um, good for about 1.2 kilos worth of lift. We're we're running about 700 grams, so we're, we're just above oh, yeah, half. Yeah, right. Half right. Okay. Yeah. So they can't lift too much more. Can't lift too much more. No. No. Yep. Um, uh, general, you got You've got a MakerBot over there, I spy, what are you printing out, yeah, spare so, parts? So all our, um, basically all our gear we 3D print um, custom for these things. Yep. So at the moment we're printing the little, little landing booties um, that go on. Um, so there's four of these in each drone, we print them singularly so we can knock them out quicker. Yep. Um, and then we also printed our, um, our fins for our, our, our localization system. Yep. And uh, our LiDAR mounts as well. So oh, okay. these yep. sit on the bottom, they also hold a, um, a PX4 flow off yep. the flow camera. So that's the finished assembly in the end, right. um, and all tied back to a pixel, um, which basically we use because we can communicate with it um, quite well um, with our with our ground station. Um, these are protocol called Mavlink, um, which basically allows a ground station to control the uh, the Mav in the air. So that that's part of the lidar system picking up the yep. laser encoded that reflects off the ground. Yes. yes. Right. Do you have to have any? Any specific surface? Or no, it, 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 it works on almost any surface. Almost any yeah. surface? A grass or anything? Yeah, grass, yeah. yeah. Really? Um, they wow. sweep the, the, um, the, the, this is a very DIY, uh, the, it's, it's open source community that really developed this stuff. Right. Um, they did build this PX4 flow camera, optical flow camera with an ultrasonic sensor on it. Actually found that our ultrasonic was getting very bad uh, information over rough ground. Sure. Um, whereas yep. the LiDAR gets a lot better data. Um, so th this whole system here is basically used um, to control uh, these drones in, a, in what's called loiter mode yep. um, and then we control them in the within the loiter mode setting our forward and backwards velocities to control them. Basically yeah, how our anti collision works basically is we look for a meter bubble around the drone um, and if another drone comes within that mm -hmm. uh, we then inhibit its, we inhibit the tablet, tablet's ability to set uh, to, to adjust the set point. Um, we, we, we actually have oh, a so million, we actually 
we had them going in XY um, yeah. to start with, but the more drones we got in, the less room we had, so we had to restrict them back. So, so we locked XY and give them Z. Um, and basically now, they're set to hold Z, um, those, sorry, set to hold XY, and if the separation's far enough, they, they won't gust into each other. But for XY movement, there is a meter buffer zone around them, right. and they will, they will actually pull up against each other, and they can then move away. So where's the process in done? Is it done on the tablet or is it done in here? And it's, then done it's, all on the ground, it's done all on the ground station. So yep. we're actually doing network control here. So basically our ground station receives right. all the data from the yep. um, units. Uh, we process all the data on our ground station and we send it back out to the units. To tell uh, them where to go. Got it. So, but, so the data is sent back to yep. the tablets and the tablet is what uh, is no, actually controlling no, it. Now our ground station controls it. Right. All, basically the tablets, they stream data to us. Yeah. 2.4 gigawatts. Got it. And then we process their commands as long as well as the commands for the, um, for the drones. Fantastic. Can you explain this? Uh, this is the control it, system. That'd be uh, cameras. Yeah. Sorry, this is the ground station so, interface here. So. Yeah, um, Basically, we can watch up to six aircraft, and uh, it looks like a bunch of lights and um, you know uh, energy displays. But basically, we're looking at the localization system, so our noise and our thresholds on our uh, on the TrackX localization system we developed. And we're also looking at the aircraft status, sensor status, tablet status, everything. We just need to know on the fly to make sure the system's working. So basically, what happens is they say operator ready. I say go for one. I arm the aircraft, so then the yep. operator can't do it unnecessarily. Then they hit uh, activate on the tablet, and uh, basically that'll bring the aircraft up. Now they have uh, Z control. And you're monitoring the individual drone uh, pack voltage as well there? Pack voltage, yep. um, the frequency that we're receiving uh, control data, so we can look at um, comms drops. Okay, so seven seven times a second, is that normal? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah? It's, just, it's nice and slow, it only needs to be slow and steady, we don't want to crowd up the, uh, the, the airspace there. Um, we're also watching the roll pitch in your altitude. So you see, he'll take off, he took off sideways, he had a bit of a bad uh, takeoff, but the system will bring him back to where he needs to be. Got it. Uh, yeah, so and we're also looking at the altitude, uh, what's coming out of the drone, and what is coming out of the end of our calculations for this for the uh, X, Y, and Z, making sure that they don't drift too far apart. Got it. And you wrote this specifically for this Intel event? Yes, or? yeah, this system was developed for the event. Yep. Um, how, how long did it take you to develop? We developed it all in about a month. A month? Yeah, how we many had, guys working on it? We had, a, we had the, there's three, there was two programmers working on it. Yep. Um, they rang us up four weeks in advance and said, can you do it? We said, yeah, <laughs> and we did it, so. Nice work, yeah. well done. And they've got some uh, Tron type outfits. It does actually flash and pulsate and do other stuff. I'm sure I saw it before. Oh yeah, someone in there's flashing. There we go, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, they're an AC electroluminescent uh, strip, we believe. And we're at the Intel RealSense booth here, and uh, this is their gesture. 3D gesture technology and as you can see people are uh, projecting it's interpreting those patterns converting to art and uh, they're projecting that up on the big screens very cool and Phil's up he's checking it there he is And this is Nikki, oh, she's going to tell us all about the suit. Hi, so this is an Intel body suit. And how it works is there's a sensor just around the lungs here. Yeah. Underneath my chest. And as I breathe, the air that comes in will light up the lights in a pattern specific to how fast my breathing is going. And it's only on the left hand side, so you can see just on the left hand side the patterns. Yeah. How did I edit it? <laughs> and it's the old audio lit up staircase trick.
love the building projection, but why can't they show back to the future? I don't know. And we're at Circular Quay, there's the Harbour Bridge in the background. Surprisingly, they haven't lit up the Harbour Bridge in any way, but they have lit up the Museum of Modern Art. Awesome, we're going to check it out. And there's the Museum of Modern Art, and uh, this one is actually quite good because they uh, sync, the, they line up the lights and everything with the building itself. You can't see it at the moment, but uh, they get some projections where it like it turns into like a Rubik's cube kind of thing, and everything you know falls down with all the different shapes in the building and uh, stuff like that. So I like, I, I prefer these ones to the just the projected ones. Which, if we have a look over here. Ta -da! There is the Opera House, the world famous Opera House, and uh, they've got uh, that all lit up as well. And it's not particularly bright from all the way back here. I'm right across the uh, other side of Circular Quay here, so it's quite a big, uh, quite a big gap. So you're getting a bit of noise there on the video. Sorry about that. But uh, someone doing backflips. Yeah, I think they could have had better graphics on the... Oh, there we go. What's that? It probably cycles through like 10-15 uh, minutes. Something like that these things usually do. I've shot uh, several of these things in the uh, city before, not as part of uh, Vivid, but as part of uh, other things. So there we go. That's quite nice. And as you can see, there's uh, quite a crowd here. Circular Keys are packed. It's almost New Year's Eve-like. Um, because Sydney is one of the uh, premier locations for New Year's Eve in the world, has the best fireworks, uh, the best New Year's Eve fireworks anywhere in the world, bar none. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a local, it's true. Everyone knows it, people come from around the world here and uh, this is, yeah, there's <laughs> almost as many people here and uh, this is really quite, quite something. I like this. The Museum of uh, Modern Art, if you're ever in Sydney, it is free, it's just, uh, turn up here to Circular Quay and here you go you can see where they've actually synced up some of this with the building itself so they've actually lined up the projectors to uh, looks like the floors are the parts of the building are moving in and out very very nice I like that effect it really works quite well and also it's Circular Quay here they got Circular Quay train station there it is all lit up with uh, the building we saw before as well awesome and yes that is a giant pig and we're at our house we've got uh, LED ropes and work explores how individuals living together make unexpected connections across the boundaries that divide nature and technology clearly and here it is Got some funky music, listen to that. Awesome. Gonna get my acoustic coupler modem and hook up. Awesome. <laughs> it's not very bright, so uh, sorry about the quality of the uh, footage it's got to gain it all up so very noisy image but uh, there's the Opera House and there's the Harbour Bridge and for those foreigners who don't know the uh, Harbour Bridge links Australia and New Zealand over there you can see Luna Park over in New Zealand okay yep that's art